Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is a super trendy 3D style that you can include in your Figma designs, your portfolios, your websites, whatever you like. And creating this is super simple and takes less than 10 minutes. I'm gonna show you how to do this today. Scan any object in the real world, convert it into 3D and animate and include it on any website, Figma project, whatever you like. All right, so to begin with, we will be taking out our phones and installing an app called Polycam. This is a free app that you can get on your Android or iPhones. Once you've installed this, it opens it up like a camera application. And here, if I click on the white button, it starts recording any object that I have. It could be your face, but in this case, I am taking this shoe, this running shoe that I have, and I'm scanning it properly from each corner, each edge. I'm taking my phone slowly around the shoe, which allows this app to scan each angle of the shoe correctly. Make sure it is in a well-lit environment and it's on a flat, clean surface. Otherwise, there might be some issues and it will automatically convert it into a 3D object that you can then export. Once you've scanned and uploaded from your phone, you can now come to your computer and here on polycam.com, once you log in, you can see all your scans up here. As you can see, I've also scanned myself, not very clean, unfortunately, because I did it with my own hands, but you get the gist of it, it is possible. Now, once we have our shoe, we'll open it up here and before we export it, we need to do one last thing. Here, there is an option on the top left called crop. Once you're in crop mode, there is this weird glitch. I'm not sure if it is a glitch, but you just need to move these arrows till you close in on the shoe or the object itself. Click on apply and if you exit out of here, you'll be able to get a nice clean shoe just like we required. Now, if I click on download, it will give me all these options to download. There's video images, which you can do as well if you want. But for this one, you either need PLY, which is in the pro mode. We'll forget about that right now. Or GLTF, which is accepted by Spline. If I click on GLTF and say download, it will download a final file to my computer. Now go to spline.design, which is a free 3D tool for your web browser. I'll give the link in the description. And don't worry, you don't have to know how to use Spline, it's fine. We'll now drag and drop this file, which I had just downloaded into Spline, and it will immediately recognize it, scan it and put it right here. I think this is amazing. I can hold Option or Alt on my keyboard and drag it around to see it from all different angles. The light, as you can see, is coming from the front. So you can edit the shoe in whatever way you like, as well as add lighting effects, etc. Now at the beginning, I showed you this nice parallax effect, which is also called a portal effect. Let's begin doing that in Spline. So to achieve this, first of all, make sure nothing on screen is selected. Then from the right panel, there is this BG color. Change the BG color to complete black, to like a pitch black. We will first create a rectangle through which we will see the shoe. So on top, there's a rectangle option. I'll click on it and I will add it right in front of the shoe. As you can see, I can now edit it to make sure that it covers the shoe completely. And there's also a little bit of padding on top and the bottom. So something like this, I need to make sure that the color of this is also black in front of the shoe. We want a cube. There's a cube option on the top right here. Click on it and right in front of the shoe, add a cube. I will now increase the size of this cube from 100 to 1000 on all the sides. As you can see, this is quite a big cube right now. We have all three objects ready, the cube, the rectangle and the shoe. Now we will set the order of these elements. The shoe needs to be at the complete back of this element. However, the cube also needs to be right behind this little rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this cube with this blue arrow right behind the rectangle. So I can now only see the rectangle a little bit, right behind it. Make sure it's almost sticking to it. And the shoe also, we need to make sure it's moved right behind this cube. I think this is now perfect. This cube needs to be black in color, which is the same as the background. Remove the lighting from the top here. Just click on this little eye icon and this will remove the lighting. Under the color, there is a drop down. I will now click on glass to select glass material. I will move this glass material right below this color layer right here. You can just drag it and that is perfect for now. Now select the rectangle and from the right here, remove the lighting just like we did before. And under the color option, change the color to a glass material. As you can see, I am able to view this shoe at certain angles. If I move it around, just hold Alt or Option on the keyboard to move it around. 
adjust the rectangle so you can see the shoe in the middle. Click on this glass option, I'll click on it and under here there's a blur option. I'll click, I'll change it from 10 to 0. Now the shoe is almost completely visible. Now I can even add a border to this glass so you can see only inside this glass. I'm going to add another material object here and inside the color I am going to add a outline. This will allow us to add an outline element and I can change this to a white color. You can even increase the corner radius from the shape option right here from 0 to something like 16 or 24. You can see we have this nice little glass element if I hold option or alt the shoe will only be visible when I am looking through this glass. Wow, what a cool masking effect. You can do the same effect with other 3D objects, even 2D assets like images, etc. that you can use to create a parallax effect. Now let's move on to actually adding this to our Figma, Framer, Webflow, etc. On the top right, I have this export option. Here, I have various ways I can do the exporting. The best way right here is to either integrate it or embed it into your website with code that it creates for you or add a public URL to Framer or Webflow. Now I can copy the embed from here, which is perfect. Now, if I want to add this to any page inside Figma, I will, I'll just create a basic rectangle like this inside my frame. I will now go to this resource panel and inside plugins, I will open up Anima. Anima is a cool free plugin that allows you to embed coded elements into your Figma files. Here if I select this rectangle, there's an option called embed code at the bottom. I'll click on embed code and I will paste the embeddable code from Spline into here. As you can see, the iframe has been added and I will click on save. Now if I click on the frame and say preview, it shows me this nice little built with spline embeddable inside Figma itself. So whichever project you're creating, you can create this just like this. Make sure that the background of your spline project is also the same as the background of your project here. And this will perfectly fit in. Wow, I love how we've been able to export this 3D object, create a nice little parallax 3D effect. The more I move this around, the funner it gets for sure. All right, guys, that was it for today's video. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up and I will see you every week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time, same place, same time. Until next time, take care. God bless.